By now, we know that the latest subvariant of coronavirus JN.1 is not a monster. Emerging in August 2023, the JN.1 subvariant has provided ample time for observation. A notable characteristic is the rapid transmission. Labeling it as a non-lethal virus may lead to complacency, but the reality is that the JN.1 subvariant has now become the prevalent strain constituting over 60% of COVID-19 cases in India. What tends to slip our mind is that even when the virus doesn't result in fatalities or deaths, it can still lead to long-term effects known as long COVID, which is broadly defined as signs, symptoms and conditions that continue to develop even after the infection. Experts believe that long COVID is the real monster. From cardiac diseases to muscle weakness, fatigue, brain fog, pain in muscles, long COVID is linked to more than 200 symptoms and the list is still evolving. In a later study, scientists discovered that long COVID is responsible for post-exercise malaise in individuals who were not hospitalized during the infection and had reasonably active lifestyles before. Published in the Nature Journal on January 4, a study conducted by Amsterdam University Medical Center revealed alterations in muscle structure and function among those with long-term COVID in comparison to healthy individuals. Upon analyzing biopsies taken before and after exercise, researchers observed white fibers in the muscles of individuals with long COVID compared to those without the condition. In another Brazilian study published in May 2023, scientists detected long COVID in around 20% patients with mild disease. The study found that fatigue was the most frequent sequel and occurred isolated or associated with other clinical manifestations. They also observed a vast impact of long COVID on the quality of life. In fact, more than 5,000 Americans have died from long COVID since the study of the pandemic according to the new estimates from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. By now, we possess robust data from various sources worldwide including leading domestic health institutions such as All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi. Collectively, these studies provide varying estimates of the prevalence of long COVID ranging from approximately 9% to 37% among patients. Experts explain that even with a conservative estimate that long COVID condition appears in 5% of people infected with COVID, the impact is substantial. It's crucial to recognize that long COVID encompasses a spectrum of conditions. Fatigue is a prevalent manifestation which is challenging to diagnose in clinical settings. In fact, long COVID has been labeled as a curse for low-income nations or developing countries because it leaves people with inability to get back to the workforce with the same energy levels. Long COVID diagnosis may not be clinically recorded and the condition tends to be underestimated even in the top-notch hospitals, with symptoms ranging from anxiety and muscle pain to brain fog, fatigue. It's crucial to acknowledge long COVID as a significant issue. The virus will continue to make changes again and again. So far, there have been nine waves globally with difference between geographies, regions, and spaced about six to 10 months apart. This will continue, but we need to have a realistic strategy rather than comparing COVID with a common cold and flu. In essence, it is our responsibility to protect ourselves from contracting the infections, even if the variant seems mild or less severe.